Hey everybody, John Schumacher here with NewWaveHealthCare.com, where digital health companies come to share their story. Today my guest is Jacob Sustrick, who is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Macy, M-E-S-I. And Jacob and his team at Macy are in the business of creating simple and effective diagnostic tools for primary care health professionals. And he's come on the show today to share a bit about his company, the story behind his company, and also a bit about the product that he has on the market currently. So, Jacob, thanks for coming on the show today. Let's just have you start out. Just tell us a little bit about your personal background. We'd like to get to know you a little bit, uh, if you have a healthcare background, etc. And then we'll jump into your business. So, hello. Thank you for the invitation. Um, yes, we started our company three years ago uh, when uh, I was uh, actually a student of uh, electrical engineering. So um, at that time, uh, my cousin was a uh, cardiovascular surgeon. And uh, on, uh, on a family lunch, he told me um, what is wrong with the diagnostics he's prefer, prefer, um, performing in his practice. So he had to, so he had to um, use his own 30 minutes to discover peripheral artery disease. So that was the time that he had to put into discovering the disease. Uh, but actually what he had to do was only measuring uh, blood pressures on arm and both ankles. So he asked me if we can um, do it automatically. And I said, okay, we can do it. We can put three blood pressures uh, together and we, can, we, and we can do the measurement. Uh, actually, it was not so simple. Uh, we had to develop our own, own algorithm to measure blood pressure on your ankles. Um, and that's our break breakthrough. So that that um, uh, actually um, that's that's why we can we developed our device for discovering peripheral artery disease, which does the measurement in only three minutes. It's very objective because it's done by a machine, and um, uh, yes, it's therefore it improves the uh, procedure uh, very well. Very good. Yeah. And so, do you have a, a is your personal background in healthcare, or is this your first time uh, in a healthcare startup environment? So it, it's my first time. Um, so we started it from scratch. Uh, we had to develop a prototype, and from developing a prototype, we went uh, on. We uh, did our business plan, and uh, from then on, we were uh, we started developing actually a marketing prototype. Um, and as you know, uh, developing medical devices requires also certification, ISO standards, and so on. And uh, Actually, we have developed our marketing prototype and in one and a half years. Uh, in that time, we also became uh, the youngest company in the region with ISO 13,485 certificates, uh, which actually uh, is allowing us to manufacture, develop, and, and sell medical devices in Europe. Wow. Yeah, very well done then. So. Um, Let's jump into your business then. I know you already kind of touched on a few things, but if someone let's let, what's your elevator pitch? Like if someone came up to you in in a in a marketplace or something and said, "Jacob, what do you guys do at Macy?" What would you say? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we are simplifying diagnostics. So everything what is uh, hard to perform on secondary level of healthcare, in in uh, we try to simplify. And put it on the primary healthcare market, so that uh, the primary, the general practitioners perform only diagnostics of very crucial diseases. Here, uh, cardiovascular diseases are one of the worst diseases, and I believe that uh, our our territory is is to really simplify diagnostics and to bring it on the primary market where screening can be performed. And this is what we did with our first device, and we we will continue that in the future. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know the primary primary level of care is key, you know, for for detection of disease, and it's just not focused on enough. So I think that's really neat that you guys are making their tools better, more efficient, because uh, that really right. is everybody's first line of defense is that primary care doctor, and and so that's that's kudos to you. So uh, paint a picture for us, uh, Jacob. Uh, paint a picture of the key problems that you're looking to address uh, around these diagnostic tools. Um, so current uh, in, in, in the practices, you can find very old medical devices which, which, ha which have, I don't know, Windows 95 operating system installed, <laughs> which are very uh, rough to operate with. Um, you have to have many medical devices uh, uh, in the practice. 
and uh, we don't like that. Uh, you know, the medical uh, doctors they have iPhones in their um, uh, in their in the, so at home they're using iPhones, they're using iPads, they're using I don't know Android devices, uh, they're using Windows uh, 8.1, and in the future we would like to bring the technology from consumer uh, electronic devices. Uh, to medical diagnostic devices. Uh, for example, we would like to to bring them uh, one display unit for all medical devices that, he, that they use for diagnostics and then uh, all other, uh, so uh, all measuring units would just connect to the display unit wirelessly um, and uh, the benefit which, which they gain here is that they can, you know, um, buy one module now and then they can they can put another modules after uh, after they need it. Um, and the second uh, uh, advantage of the system is uh, that they can use actually uh, a software. They can only they can purchase on the display unit. They can purchase special software that will perform measurements with the same hardware with, with the same measuring units that they already have. So this is where we see the future of uh, professional medical diagnostics. And of course, that's normal. Everything has to be connected with hospital information system and the cloud uh, as well. Yep, perfect. And what what inspired you to do this? Like, did, were you personally affected by a problem that you, you saw this problem and you said, uh, "We need to build a company around this to address this issue"? Well, uh, young doctors are telling us uh, this this problems uh, all the time because you know we are we we do the we actually we have. This, we are organizing medical jams uh, every month. Uh, medical jam is uh, an event where doctors, uh, electrical engineers, physics, uh, I don't know, other experts, uh, also um, uh, experts in pharmaceutical um, uh, territory are coming together and they're thinking about how to improve healthcare and we are organizing that and from from those events we can we can see uh, and we can we can identify what kind of a problems doctors have and that is too much time for uh, diagnosing uh, very 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 um, bad medical devices to do the diagnostics and uh, the technology that they know from consumer electronics is not yet in the medical devices Right, yeah. It, healthcare is always way behind, it seems like, with all the regulations and rules and stuff. So, I, you know, like you say, there's just a huge push for up-to-date technology that can provide useful data that you can aggregate and use effectively. It's, it's, it's a huge, huge uh, shift that's coming in healthcare, and it's really exciting. And, and, and currently, the Doppler systems that are used to diagnose peripheral vascular disease take a long time. I mean, they can take 30, 40 minutes of a doctor's time sometimes, whereas your product, you said, it can be done in three minutes, I believe, right? Yes, exactly. Only by uh, you know uh, looking out of the box and using another method to do the measurements uh, for for peripheral vascular disease. So I think that's a key solution you guys are providing. Is not only is easier for them to use, but also that it's more time efficient. And could you dig a little deeper into that? Uh, dig, dig a little deeper into what solutions you guys are providing. I mean, obviously time for the doctor, but what other solutions are you guys? Time and the other important factor is accuracy. Accuracy. Uh, with with our uh, automated ankle brachial pressure index measuring device, we measure all three blood pressures at the same time. That cannot be done with the Doppler probe. With a mm -hmm. Doppler probe, uh, educated um, uh, nurse had to do had to perform blood pressure reading on arm, and then she moved on left ankle and then on the right ankle you know and in between the blood pressure drops right you know because the patient is is uh, being in a supplying position he's feeling comfortable and uh, maybe a few minutes ago he was running to the to the to the to, to the to the to the uh, office and at, at that moment he lied down and you know blood pressure goes down and that's the problem with the doctor but our device performs all three uh, blood pressure readings at the same time so this is one thing, and the second thing is um, we uh, developed an algorithm which we which we which we named improved oscillometric uh, method or algorithm, um, and we use this improved oscillometric method to do measurement uh, measurements of blood pressure on your ankle. Why this is important? 
you cannot use normal blood pressure monitor to do um, uh, readings on your ankles because your ankle has different anatomy. Mm -hmm. right. And with our algorithm, uh, we can detect uh, very low pressures and we can detect also uh, 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 a state where the vessel, where there, where there is no blood flow through the vessel. So this makes our device very, uh, very uh, good for not only primary healthcare actually, but also for uh, vascular uh, surgery and for cardiovascular uh, clinics. Right. Yeah. And, and so, are you guys the only ones on the market doing this? I know I looked up a couple of your competitors. It looked like uh, oh, was it Huntsley in the UK uh, has mm -hmm. also had a um, automated ankle brachial index machine. Uh, do they have a similar device, or can you speak to? your advantage over your competitors? Uh, our advantage, our advant advantage towards Huntley is that our device is really simple to use. Mm. Uh, this is the first um, advantage. And the second advantage uh, probably is that our device is really intended uh, for primary healthcare. So not only usability, but also the price is very important for general practitioners, you know. The general practitioners, they get money for each patient. Uh, in many many countries, they they do not get money for the service they do. So for them, uh, the price uh, is really important. And uh, when they're talking about the price, they're like uh, ordinary consumers. So that's why you have to be very well focused on their market, and the device has to be developed for them. So you guys are less less costly and more efficient to use, simpler to use, and that's really your whole theme is simplicity in your in your devices, right? So exactly. Uh, okay. Um, how big is that market? I mean, how big is the market for peripheral vascular disease or diagnostic equipment? You can throw out numbers of, you know, number of patients or money or mm -hmm. whatever you want to talk about, but how, how big is that market? Um, so uh, there are international guidelines for peripheral artery disease. Um, and those guidelines s say that this disease should, so our ankle brachial index should be measured to every patient older than uh, 50 years that is smoking, having diabetes or hypertension, right. and it should be measured to every patient older than 65 years. Right. So what can that tell us? Um, it tells us that our device should be used in every primary healthcare office. So that means that uh, our market is as big as uh, there are primary healthcare offices around. So for example, in, in Europe, we have about 100,000 uh, offices, so this is our market size in Europe. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, I do not know by heart how many primary healthcare offices are in uh, USA, but I would say approximately uh, the same number. So this is our uh, market uh, in USA and in Europe. Okay, yeah. So a big market, a big market. Any primary, all primary care providers should have some effective way of screening for peripheral vascular disease. I mean, it's a huge factor when it comes to stroke and heart disease. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, that's good. So, yeah, big market then. Exactly. Uh, talk about your funding. Like, how did, how did, can you describe and kind of paint, paint, tell the story about how you guys got started? I mean, did you get seed funding from angels? Did you bootstrap mm -hmm. it? Like, how did you guys start? And then where you guys are at today with, with your funding? Uh, uh, for a start, we invested, so when we established the company, uh, the three founders, we invested <laughs> each one 7,500 euros. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next money we got was the money from uh, the government. It was 20,000 euros uh, per year in three years. Um, the third um, money that we got was from the banks, actually. We got about 100,000 uh, of uh, euros of, of uh, loan. Mm -hmm. And the fourth uh, funding was uh, from um, from angel from angels. So we got an angel investment of four hundred thousand uh, euros. Nice, uh, but now we are uh, we already do uh, we have our own income. We we sell our uh, device, and we we can uh, we use that income for for uh, growing our company and for for uh, actually for growth. Right. So, um, yeah, as far as revenue, how much are you guys doing a month? Uh, I can tell you per year. We do about uh, 300,000 euros per year. Uh, and this, this, this is growing, actually. This year we plan 
uh, about 700,000 euros of income only with this product that we have now on the market. Uh, but uh, by the end of the year, we will put uh, next to this product uh, our new products, uh, and we believe that with new, with new products, we will we will actually make uh, we will show show how 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 good can we be on the market. Uh, but of course, we're also looking for investment. Right now, we're looking for five million uh, dollars of investment. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see here. What's your growth strategy for doing all this? I mean, I, can you talk about that? Uh, yes. Um, so our main strategy is uh, is 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 uh, is focused in professional healthcare. So we would like to we will uh, continue with bringing uh, di uh, diagnostics in primary healthcare. Um, and uh, this is so we will bring modularity, uh, wireless technology, cloud-based technology, uh, connectivity uh, to the to primary physicians. So not only uh, we will not only measure uh, ankle brachial index, we will add uh, more innovative um, devices like device for discovering venous insufficiency. Then we will add ECG, we will add spirometry, we will add. Uh, measurement of oxygenation. Um, so this is in the in the in the in the professional healthcare. Uh, but we are also uh, we will we also would like to so we would like to bring uh, the technology that we are developing for professional healthcare. We would like to bring it to consumers, and we would like to uh, actually develop. Uh, we are developing now um, a really accurate device for measuring. Uh, vital signs uh, for your home and for your uh, personal use. Okay. Wow, so you got some big goals there. Um, what metrics do you guys generally use to measure your progress towards these goals? Are you just using, obviously, revenue is a big one, but anything else? Uh, not only revenue. Uh, we also measure um, by, mm, uh, by our uh, important, important customers. So those are uh, private uh, healthcare uh, organizations. Uh, we can say um, uh, the general practice practitioners, so general practice offices, uh, private general practice offices, uh, and also by by having uh, big pharmaceutical companies uh, as our customers. You know, the, the big pharmaceutical companies uh, they they want to to discover the, the they want to discover diseases early. Uh, and by discovering diseases early, uh, they will put uh, the the medicines um, into the humans uh, to, to, to the humans much earlier. So that this is also how we do revenue with cooperating with with uh, pharmaceutical companies. Right. Perfect. And then um, expand on your business model a little bit. Like you guys are making hardware and software, I believe. Um, can you talk to talk about your business model? Um, Yes, we develop uh, hardware and software in-house. Uh, for the for the software that we that we need uh, partners. So, for example, for developing cloud services, for developing um, uh, computer-based applications, we use uh, outsourcing. Mm -hmm. um, we actually we also manufacture in-house. So we are doing assembling uh, and quality control uh, in-house, and then uh, shipping is made from our warehouse. Um, how we do sales? Um, we do sales uh, with our distributor, uh, distribu dis distributorship, distributorship network. Mm -hmm. We have our, we have the network uh, established. We are establishing it actually in, uh, in Europe, and uh, we are now moving uh, also uh, to USA this year. Very good. So uh, marketing and sales is done uh, by our distributors uh, who sell locally. And actually do marketing activities locally, but we control the operations from 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 our headquarters. So, um, what was the biggest challenge that you faced throughout this process? You've been at this for what a couple years now, maybe you said. Three uh, years, yes. Two years. Um, talk about the challenges. I mean, it's a, quite an endeavor. Now you've got a pretty nice business going. It's growing. It's got to be exciting for you. But I'm sure it wasn't always. That way, I'm sure it was a struggle at first. Can you can you talk about some of the biggest challenges you faced when you started your company? 
Oh, yes. Uh, so in, in the last three years, we actually had many challenges. Uh, we faced many challenges and many problems. Uh, so maybe the first um, bigger challenge was uh, getting an ISO, being an ISO 13485 certified, and then uh, getting EC certification uh, to be able to sell on the European market. So this was the first uh, bigger challenge. Uh, when we over overcome that, when we g got that, uh, we faced, um, so we had to uh, do the sales. Um, so we were uh, we were trying to to get as as many distributors as we could, but uh, on uh, in the in the process of establishing sales in uh, other countries, we realized that it's not um, uh, uh, that we should not you know uh, get as 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 many distributors as we could, but we had to um, be the best on the markets that work for us. So we had to be the best on the markets where peripheral artery disease. Uh, is well known and uh, the diagnostics is performed and uh, from from that problem we realized that uh, the best markets for us are Europe is Europe United States Canada and Australia um, and uh, right now our biggest problem so not not problem as is uh, it's uh, more yeah. as challenge um, to uh, you know not to do only initial sales but to to continue selling um, uh, on the territories that we are. So it's not only the first sales that we do, we had to continue uh, selling on that markets. So this is the challenge that we are facing right now. So in the, in the begin, beginning, regulatory challenges or licensing type challenges, I'm sure, with, with a medical device. And then, of course, how do you get the word out? You know, with any new project, no one knows mm -hmm. you really how well yet. And so building a sales team, building that, distributor network I'm sure was a big challenge and probably still is a challenge I mean how, how are you guys planning on scaling your business uh, so the, the the recipe is to to have distributors on the on the markets that uh, peripheral artery disease and the primary care at market is developed uh -huh. but to do really good uh, sales and to do uh, uh, to, to develop the market for our future products uh, the best thing is to um, uh, that we develop uh, some crucial and important markets by ourselves. So therefore, that's why we the, that's why we uh, have an office in London, uh, and that office takes care for sales in the United Kingdom. Uh, that's why this year we will uh, open an office uh, in France, and another office will be opened in uh, Germany. So these three markets uh, we would like to cover it by ourselves. Uh, by our marketing team, and we would like to really take control of it. And on the, in the end of the year, after FDA approval will be uh, covered, uh, we will uh, start doing the same in USA, because yes. uh, US market is one of the uh, the best markets for our type of business. Wow, that's exciting! Then you got to be excited about the growth and 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 um, expansion of your business. That's really cool. I am, I am, and uh, not only myself. Also, our team is very well uh, is excited uh, to grow in those uh, on those markets. Right now, uh, it's uh, 15 of us, so it's a team of 15 people, uh, and uh, we look forward to 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 get uh, the next uh, the next uh, member of the team uh, in uh, into our office. Very good. What's what's you went through these challenges? What what's one piece of I guess learn. What did you learn from that? Give us one thing that you learned from those challenges. Uh, not to give up. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Uh, this is one of the one what I have learned, and the second thing maybe is um, really to be uh, well. That's the same one to be persistent, uh, not to give up, and despite uh, you know people are saying you won't you won't make it. So really, be persistent and carry on your work uh, as you believe it's right. Right, and that may this may be the same thing. But uh, what's one piece of advice you would give a new uh, entrepreneur in the digital health industry? Like, and a piece of advice that might be a little more specific to healthcare. Um, well, I think that this advice I will I will um, I will uh, use this opportunity to to take this advice from Steve Jobs. Sure. Uh, I believe once he said that um, 
if if there the, the if market does not exist, uh, then make the market. He said something like that. So um, uh, you have to you have to tell people what do they need. And I believe healthcare is the same thing. Right now, uh, a revolution is is going on in digital health. Uh, we do not know what kind of technology, what kind of uh, system will work in the next ten years, um, because uh, the all the all the all the all the um, uh, activities around healthcare uh, have just started. So right now uh, we have to develop what we think is the best, and then we have to push that as hard as we can. And after that, uh, the most persistent companies will be developing the future of healthcare. And I believe that right now um, it's the perfect time for all uh, healthcare companies um, to, to, to take their part uh, in the industry, in the market, uh, because uh, big players are not controlling it. Um, yes, because big players are not controlling it right now. All right. Is there anything, uh, as we're getting towards the end of our interview here, is there anything else you'd like to say about your company? I know you guys are in the, the XPRIZE competition, I believe. Is there anything else you'd like to, to mention before we wrap things up? Uh, yes, that's right. We are in the XPRIZE competition, so that's the, other, that's the second part of our uh, development strategy. Um, so uh, on the end, so in next five to ten years, we would like to connect the consumer uh, diagnostics with professional diagnostics. We believe that doctor or physician he needs to to know the data from your um, uh, from the diagnostics you're doing at home, and he needs to put it together with the diagnostic he does in his office. Uh, so, um, but he needs accurate and uh, um, uh, good the devices that he will trust. He needs those devices in your homes, so you, he cannot. Uh, consider the data from, from gadgets uh, for reliable diagnostics. And in the future we will, uh, and also not in the future, but also for the XPRIZE competition, we will deliver, um, we will bring professional uh, diagnostics devices to your homes, but those devices will be user friendly and uh, the usability will be uh, the same as uh, you experience it with the uh, consumer electronics. Um, and everyone, everybody that wants to join us, we are free to 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 discuss the collaboration. Right. Perfect. Yeah. The e the e patient movement is on. Em empowering the patient to 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 modify or to excuse me, take care of their own uh, vitals and different things like that through devices like you're talking about is just going to be a huge way to make our system more efficient and cost efficient and just better monitoring and, and more personal empowerment, which is what we all need. We need technology can do that and also making good wellness decisions. Uh, the, the, the partner of those two, I feel, is what's going to help our healthcare system everywhere in the world. Uh, I, I make, agree with you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's uh, just let's wrap things up here. Let's just have you uh, end by just sharing, Jacob, just share with our listeners and our viewers today where they can find out more about you and what you're doing. And then we'll wrap things up. Uh, check out our webpage. It's www.messymedical.com. Um, so this is uh, a channel where uh, where viewers can find uh, our company or me, um, or they can they can take a look on our Facebook page. They can follow us on Twitter. Actually, everywhere, all around, and everywhere, they can find us every year on uh, uh, the biggest uh, medical uh, devices uh, fair called Medica. And uh, next week we are participating at uh, fair. Sebit in, in Hanover, Germany. Uh, and uh, we look forward to meet uh, every one of, of, of you, of viewers, uh, next to the, our booth. Sounds good. All right, Jacob, thanks for your time today. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that discussion uh, with Jacob. That was a great discussion. Not only painted the picture of how he built his company, but also the problem at hand with peripheral vascular disease and what they're out to do. Uh, this interview will be archived, as all of the interviews are, at newwavehealthcare.com. You can click on the past interviews tab, and Jacob's interview will be at the top of that list, uh, probably by Wednesday. Uh, or you can simply go to newwavehealthcare.com forward slash Macy, M-E-S-I, and his show notes page will pop up with the recording of this video, the audio recording, and any links to any resources mentioned during this interview. Um, also, check us out on iTunes, New Wave Healthcare on iTunes. If, you, if you're looking to have something to, to listen to in the car on the way to work or at the gym, 
And head over to newwavehealthcare.com and subscribe to our email list. We put out a, a curated list of interesting articles in the digital health industry every Friday. So you might want to subscribe there and get that right to your inbox every week. And I think that's it for now. We'll have another interview next Monday, and I will see you guys then. Thank you. Bye-bye.